Hey, what's up, Funkheads? The Funko Pops from the movies are some of my favorite ones to collect. I get especially excited when Funko announces that they're going to make a new pop line from a classic movie, like The Godfather, for example, or James Bond Pops. So I decided to do a top 10 list. And this one was very challenging because there are a lot of movie pops. To try to whittle it down, though, I'm not including Star Wars, I'm not including Marvel, I'm not including DC, or Disney, because I think those are big enough to be in a category of their own, because there are so many pops in those lines. And also Harry Potter. No Harry Potter, because I also think that is a big enough line to stand on its own and separate from just movie pops. Remember that these lists are very subjective. You may hate some of these pops, you may love some of them, you may think that some definitely don't deserve to be in the top 10, or I may have excluded some of your favorites. If that is the case, feel free to let me know in the comments below. But this is my top 10 best movie Funko Pops. Before I get into the top 10, I'm going to talk about some honorable mentions. The Georgie Chase Pop with his arm missing and the Pennywise Amazon exclusive with him holding Georgie's arm are definitely my two favorite Pops from the It line. They're gruesome, they're detailed, they're really cool. I also really love the Alex the Large Pop with the mask. The common is pretty cool as well, but a little plain. I think the mask really puts this one over the top. They did a really good job painting the nose and with the sculpt. Also a really great movie pop. Alan and Carlos is definitely a grail pop for me. This one's a little older, so there's not as much detail in his hair. And he does look a little bit like he's made out of Play-Doh, but he's still a really good pop. Carlos looks hilarious on his chest there. And it's funny how they made him stand like how Zach Galifianakis stands with his like hand on his waist like that. It's really a funny pop. This Blofeld's pop from the 007 line is about as perfect as a pop can get. I wouldn't change a thing about this guy, and I love the pops that have another little pop with them. Because if you look closely, the cat does have kind of like the pop eyes, even though he's closing them. This pop really turned out great. The injured Dr. Ian Malcolm is another really great one. They really captured Jeff Goldblum's sexy essence in that scene. It's just a hilarious looking pop. The two Bruce Lee pops from Game of Death and Enter the Dragon also came out perfectly. They got great dynamic poses, and they're instantly recognizable as Bruce Lee from those movies. I just don't feel they're detailed enough to make the top 10. El Fano from Pan's Labyrinth has a really magnificent sculpt, and I really like how they did the paint on the face with that darker wash over the green. It makes it look like a more expensive collectible than it is. Really like the hair sculpt. This pop turned out really nice. I also really like the Holly Go Lightly pop, a very random choice from Funko. I'm not sure how popular Breakfast at Tiffany's is. It's not even a movie that has aged very well, but Audrey Hepburn was an icon, and her pop turned out really well. Lots of tiny little detail. Very, very nice paint job on this one as well. All right, now on to the best of the best, starting at number 10. It doesn't get more iconic than Marlon Brando's Vito Corleone, one of the best actors of all time, playing one of the best characters of all time. And Funko really got it right with the pop. He's instantly recognizable as Vito Corleone from his best scene, at his daughter's wedding, wearing the tuxedo and holding the cat. I really like how they made his eyelids drooping instead of just the round regular Popeyes. That was a nice touch. And I like that they actually made him look fat. Sometimes characters that are fat don't really look fat as Funko Pops, but this one does. They even gave him a little bit of a double chin to make him look a little fatter. This is just a great pop. Audrey 2 from Little Shop of Horrors is one of those Funko Pops that doesn't really look like a Funko Pop because the original character does have such a gigantic head. So the oversized pop head style is actually accurate in this case. I really like how they did all the teeth, the texture on the skin, the sculpting of the lips. It looks just like Audrey 2 in the movie. And since this doesn't exactly look like a pop, I could see a lot of people that aren't pop collectors, but maybe fans of Little Shop of Horrors picking this up. It's a very random movie for them to make pops from, which is another reason I like Funko, but I'm glad they do it. Not sure how many of these are actually going to make. I can't imagine Little Shop of Horrors being all that popular anymore. And I do like the Chase one a little better than the Common one. I believe the only difference is that there's a little bit of blood on this one. The Common is fine, but the little bit of blood does make this one look cooler, in my opinion. King Leonidas is a grail for many, including myself because he did come out very good. He's an earlier pop, but he had a lot of detail for the pops at that time. He even had a mouth, which wasn't all that common. 
I like that they made his cape flowing. I like that they try to give him some definition on his chest and arms. I like all the dings in his shield, and I like that they used metallic paint for his armor and shield. Definitely a pop I wish I would have picked up when he was new because now he is very pricey. David Bowie's Jareth from Labyrinth really shows you how far the Funko sculptors have come with their designs. I mean, look at that hair sculpt. Five years ago, there was no pop that had that elaborate of a hair sculpt. It looks just like his hair in the movie. And the sculpt on his body is great too. The paint job is great. Everything about this pop turned out perfectly. I think that the entire Mad Max Fury Road pop line came out really nice. But if I were to pick just one of them to kind of represent the whole line, it would be a Morton Joe because of this extremely elaborate sculpt and paint job. There's a lot of different textures going on here, a lot of different types of paint, and a lot of tiny little details like the metals, the venting where his nose would be, his furrowed brow, his pistols, his tubes. Just a ton of details, all done really well on a very eye-catching pop. And I do think that the common one looks better than the chase, because I think that mask is so cool. Definitely one of my favorite pops from one of my favorite movies, and I hope they make some more. Alien Covenant wasn't the best movie in the world. I still kind of liked it. And maybe the best thing to come from it was this Neomorph with Toddler Pop. It's definitely the creepiest pop ever made with those humanoid looking teeth. No eyes and that really clammy looking effect that they gave the skin. This guy is already kind of oversized for a regular release. And the fact that he comes with another tiny pop is great. I love the pops that come with another smaller one. You feel like you're getting a little bonus for the same price. I wish that Funko would do that more often. But yeah, if you're a fan of Funko Pops, I hope you all get to see this one in person one day because pictures don't do it justice. This really is a pop that stands out amongst the rest. They made four Planet of the Apes Pops, but my favorite is Dr. Zayas. These Pops are also a little older, but they really put a lot of texture in the hair and on the face. And you gotta admit that that is a funny looking face. I mean, I can't look at these pops without giggling to myself a little bit. Their monkey faces just crack me up. And so does their shoes. They kind of look like those shoes that have like individual sections for your toes. I really, really love my Planet of the Eggs collection. Lurts from the new wave of the Lord of the Rings is one of the best pops of the year in my opinion. And it's mainly because of that face. The contrast between the red and white looks so good. And I also really like the paint they use for his leather armor. It actually really does look like leather. I think it's really impressive when Funko can make plastic look like all these different types of textures. And this pop is a perfect example. His shield and sword look like metal. His armor looks like leather. And his face looks like orc. He is definitely the standout in my Lord of the Rings collection. Here's another most wanted grail for a lot of collectors, including myself, and that is the Martian from Mars Attacks. This is one of the first pops to have this level of detail, including a dome over the head and eyes that weren't just painted black and a mouth and a more elaborate paint job on the skin and the brain. Even though this is an older figure, it looks like it could have been designed this year. That's how detailed it is. There's also a metallic version, but I do think that the common one looks better. I really hope to be able to get my hands on this pop one day. All right, and for number one, this was very hard. I doubt anybody can come up with a single movie pop that everybody agrees is gonna be the best one, but I do think La Muerte from Book of Life is one of the best all-time pops. Not even sure how popular the Book of Life was, but this pop is very, very expensive now. So it goes to show that a lot of people want this, not just because they're big, huge Book of Life fans, but because the design and the paint job on it are done so well. I mean, let's start with the details. I love all those tiny little skulls on her hat and the one by the flower, the flower themselves, the candles. It's a very elaborate design on that hat and the Day of the Dead makeup on her face looks really good. I mean, you can put this in a wall of a hundred pops out of the box and everybody's eye would gravitate towards her because of that contrast in the face paint. The hair is sculpted really well and so is her body. Everything about this pop is just done right. Excellent sculpt, excellent colors, just the definition of eye-catching. So that's why I put it at number one. 
All right, that was my top 10 movie Funko Pops. I actually contemplated making this a top 20 list or something because there are so many really good movie Funko Pops, but I tried my hardest and narrowed it down to 10. Let me know in the comments below what you think about the 10 I picked, which ones you would have included in this list, which ones you would have excluded, what movies you hope Funko makes Pops for in the future, or anything else you'd like to say. Thanks for watching and take it easy.